our case, we decided to, to let the, the banks fail. They were private banks. And as I have sometimes said, I have never understood why somehow banks are the holy churches of the modern economy, whereas it is normal to let uh, other companies uh, go bankrupt and fail. Suddenly when a bank is in trouble, everybody comes rushing and says, no, 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 this can't happen. Some people say we didn't have the money to keep them going. To some extent that is true. But... It was also a part of a comprehensive policy where, on many other issues, we went against the orthodox financial view prevailing in the United States and Europe. And now, four years later or so, Iceland is recovering in a remarkable way. We have 3% economic growth, we have 5% unemployment, the state finances are in a reasonable shape. So. By going against the uh, established orthodox uh, views uh, prevailing in the US and Europe, we actually managed to uh, create a recovery which is quite remarkable. So you didn't look at the banks as these golden children that no. needed to be protected no. and coddled and saved? No. no, absolutely not. These were private companies operating fundamentally like private companies, rewarding the bankers and the shareholders. So why, when they fail, should ordinary people, taxpayers, teachers, nurses, workers, uh, pay, the, pay the price uh, and bear the burden? You also did something a little unconventional, and that was right away, at least in the first year, you didn't resort to austerity. You upped social spending in certain programs, yeah, sure. but then eventually you implemented some, as I understand it, 100 different taxes. How did that not slow down the growth that you had finally gotten? Well, when you are taking a nation through a profound financial crisis, and although we are now back on course, we should not forget this created enormous hardships for ordinary families in Iceland who, who lost uh, many of them their houses, uh, their, some of them their entire savings. So if you're going to bring a nation uh, through a profound crisis like this uh, back on the road to recovery, you have to enable them to see justice done. You have to empower them. You have to make them realize that everybody is paying uh, the into constant, the system. Yeah, into the system mm -hmm. in this way. And Does it surprise and, and, you that 48 percent of Americans don't pay at least the, the important chunk of taxes? Well, yes, it, to some extent it does, because I believe we have to realize that if a democracy is going to deal with a profound financial crisis like this, you have to instigate the political process in such a way that people are willing to bear the burden and, and face the sacrifices if they see justice done in a democratic way. So what we did was not only to go against the traditional view of uh, the fiscal policies, the taxing policies and the welfare state, we also introduced currency controls, uh, we devalued, uh, devalued our currency. David Cameron, the UK leader, is making news by giving a major speech in which he in essence says that he wants to if you just read through between the lines, distance himself a bit from the Eurozone. Uh, you have suspended talks about becoming a member of the Eurozone, yet one of the social democratic ministers in your country, uh, Kirsten Julius Dotter, is saying we have to be a part of the Eurozone. It will be dynamic for our economy. Will you ever be a part of the Eurozone as long as you're president? Well, I don't think it's related to my presidency or not, but it's absolutely clear that the, whereas the Eurozone looked appealing for about a year after our banks collapsed. It's a completely different picture today. Olaf Grimson, President of Iceland, we appreciate you being on well, Fox Business. Thank you very much. It was very great to be with you. It's thank a you.